I think right now, the software is what is limiting tool changers mm -hmm. because there's only so many of them on the market. Now with the Snapmaker and it likely running Orca, I am very curious to see how much better Orca gets to run with Prusas. The big benefit of a Prusa machine is you've got Prusa Slicer. It's well-developed. It works well. The profiles are good enough. They're not perfect. They're good enough. And it works. If you try to use that same profile, like the XL profile in Orca, it is nowhere near as good. It's not as refined. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to see different. If we can get Orca to bring up more of the tool changing because it's open source that can trickle down into Perusha Slicer. But at the same time, it puts Orca in a premium position to be the provider of tool changer slicer it's software. It's so funny you say that because I've literally just started talking with a software engineer oh. into cracking how Bamboo Lab got their integration working with Orca mm -hmm. so we can open it up for generic systems. Because that, that's the big thing. If we can open it up for generic systems like a box turtle, for example, then you can just run a script on a, a Voron machine or on a RepRap machine and just link it similar to how Bamboo Lab linked to Bamboo Slicer, you get all that functionality of click a button, it loads the materials in, it knows what materials are there based on the printer. You can RFID it in so it automatically syncs as well. Like all of that becomes possible. Right. And I think it is doable. Like Orca yeah. is open source, which means the code is open source. It just is very obfuscated, mm -hmm. and some of it is hidden inside the Bamboo Lab printer. But now that we've seen from the, the Snapmaker that they have done something very similar, it really wouldn't surprise me if they figured out the hard work and we can just like open up the book and go, oh, oh, it's all these little things here, and then let's take it and open it up for everyone else. That would be ideal. And again, you know, I think a lot of push development is pushing toward the core of one. It does appear like the XLs kind of on the back burner, but with so many staff members at Purusha, who the hell knows? I would love to see, like on the Purusha Slicer side, like Schmidty says, we need those built-in calibration tools in Purusha Slicer. Oh my God, we need them so bad. The built-in calibration for stuff for Orca is tremendous. For a company that spends so much time, yeah, for, for a company that spends so much time developing Purusha Slicer, I am so surprised how long it takes for them to get basic features from Orca back into Pusa Slicer. I think a lot of it has to do with that they're working on something else. Then all of a sudden that new shiny comes up and they have to make the decision of, do we split the team and do both things slower? Or do we go down the path that we're continuing till we hit that finish line? Then we go back and implement it as well. Like that's where having like two primary softwares, and to be clear, there's more than just two, but... In this, in this specific case, we're talking about two. But that's where having these two specific slicers become an issue. I mean, same thing with Orca, right? Orca can take a fair bit of time to implement something, but being a much smaller dev team than Purusha, they've got a little bit more autonomy because they're not like a part of a larger conglomerate that has to make a business decision for the business of do we support the community as a whole or do we work on continuing to support our specific machines? That's a difficult decision. And certainly part of it is what you pay for with Prusa Slicer. I do wish we would see more Orca taking from Prusa, but right now there aren't a lot of reasons. Orca's already got most of it. So I'm hoping that the next big iteration of Prusa Slicer, where it goes into 3.0, is like a OMG kind of change. It's all of it's better. Because otherwise, mm. Orca does start to become the de facto standard, even on Prusa machines. Yeah, like the, the quality of life benefit of Orca has just been so huge. It, it's why we dropped um, Cura Slicer as our official slicer of choice. Like we used to only develop profiles for Cura and then we were co-direct, like developing for Prusa Slicer at the same time. Orca showed up and literally within two weeks of us looking at it, we just went, nope, it's if just better. you're not going to use Orca, we're not going to support the others. Like, yes, you can still load our printers onto both because they're just print profiles. They're, it works on every slicer. Yeah. But half the issues we actually had with the initial batch of printers was because of Cura, not because of the printers, where Cura used to have a max volumetric flow 
option in the settings. So you could set, no matter anymore? what, gone, gone. I can't believe they removed this. Me okay. and the, the software engineer I was talking to, Chris, were looking for about like two hours to try and find if they've renamed it or they've hidden it behind a different setting somewhere. No, it is gone, which is the stupidest problem because volumetric flow is really the thing that determines quality. Yeah. If you're flowing so you too know fast, his machine, it, his know. machine has the crap um, uh, Wanhao duplicator i3 clone. Oh god! And we were trying to like determine what the settings were, and then I realised, oh, his volumetric flow is way too high because Cura allows it. You can set whatever speed, and Cura will just go, "Yep, do it." And I, it will strip the, the filament. Yeah, I, I much prefer where you say, "This is what I want the max speed to be," and then I set my max volumetric flow rate and then it just figures everything else out you know i i do prefer that that's so dumb they've realized that having the brand recognition is likely more important for them right now but that's it they're not and, and a lot of them never update it like chidi slicer elegu slicer they're all multiple revisions behind they never update it yep. because these are hardware companies they don't care about the software when in reality they should just put out legit profiles for Orca and be done with it. And I, I agree. I, I I think what Orca should do is like, look, if you're a manufacturer and you're going to submit profiles, there should be a recommended donation amount. Don't force it, right? It, there shouldn't be a force, but certainly there should be a recommended donation amount, whether it's $100, $500, whatever it is. There should be a recommended amount to help them maintain the fact that this stuff is not free. It costs a lot of money to make. I, I look at it as... I, that, that's just my opinion, is we should support what the industry uses. Just come, it hurts because we, we've gotten used to free stuff. Yes. We've gotten used to Prusa Slicer being free. We've gotten used we've to gotten open used source to equals free. being free. And it should well, it should still be free. I, I don't like it when things get locked back because money grubbing and it, it just makes the industry worse. But it annoys me that all of these multi-million pound, sometimes even multi-billion pound companies rest on the laurels of 20 to 200 free developers in their spare time just trying to make a damn thing work when yep. they, bigger companies, can't. I'm trying to find a nice company that is really big, but they generically use Orca. Oh, Raise 3D. Aren't they using Raise 3D has their maker? own slicer. They have idea maker. Yeah. Most people that I talk to use the Orca version. Because Idea Maker's not. Idea Maker is, it has a couple of nice features, but otherwise there's not a lot of value that it brings to the table that other slicers don't bring as well. I, I actually have to open Orca now. I need to find a good example printer. I think Sobel is probably loads. the biggest one right now that just uses Orca. Yeah. Does Sobel have their own? I don't think they do. But the point being is like, if these companies, their entire backbone of we can use this printer on this slicer mm -hmm. profitable, maybe they should start supporting the slicers. They probably like, should. It, it, it does hurt me, and I am actually going to check the GitHub just to make sure Sovol isn't the only company that supports. I know there's like two companies that support Orca Slicer at the moment. Oh, Orca became number one GitHub repository of the day. When? I don't know. Okay. It, it's on their thing. I'm looking at it now. Sometime in February. That's cool. Layers of Lily is asking uh, if we've considered interviewing Soft Fever. We have, and we have reached out. Soft Fever prefers to be a more private individual and has denied they want to maintain their privacy. And I 100% respect that. I would love to interview them, but there there's respect to be given there. It's Quiddy Tech and Big Tree Tech. Those two officially give money to Orca Slicer. Soval doesn't? Nope. Hmm. Oh, it's they give money to money the Voron either. Project. They give money to the Voron Project. I'm surprised the Voron yeah, it's Project not doesn't a lot support of money. Orca. I think it's like $1,000 yeah. a year to be on that on that page. Oh, it's less. Is it? it? I think it's 500 That's nothing. I think it's 500 That's cheap. Uh... I, d I did talk. It might have changed since. Mm -hmm. uh, I, as much as I wish I could throw money at Orca Slicer, if I'm not taking a wage, I'm not throwing money at free projects. Until I take a wage, because then it comes out of my pocket, and I want to pay for it myself. I don't want it to be a yeah a bit of a bullshit business purchase. Um, but no, we've got Anchor Make on here. We've got all of the AnyCubic printers officially on here. All the artillery printers, BQ, 
uh, Congro. They're not cheap machines. Yeah, there's hundreds Obviously, every of... Creality machine. Yeah, there's like, like nine pages of, of Creality machines. Flash Forge is on here. Yeah. Hell, all the FL Sun stuff. Like, these are not small companies. Mm -hmm. These are companies that could easily, like, drop a thousand bucks. Yeah. And they wouldn't even notice it nope. in any of their metrics. And it's yeah. a shame. It, it's a real shame. Like, the Orca Slicer is the backbone of the additive industry at the moment. The, the fact it's not being supported is insane to me. It would like, be ideal to insane. see companies just directly support them. You know, and maybe that's something, like, as a content creator that I can push for and say, you know, look, you guys are, like, Snapmaker, they're running Orca. They even say it, that they're running Orca. Mm -hmm. Are they going to run a skinned Orca? You bet your damn rights they're going to be doing it. They should be supporting Orca financially. There's no reason they couldn't, right? They're selling these machines for, even call it $1,000. There's profit to be made in there. And they're able to give a dollar a machine. Structure it like a license deal. Just do something to give back to community. Because if you continue to take and take and take, and you don't give anything back, the people that are doing all the giving might not be as, you know, motivated to continue to give. And that's exactly why Prusa's moved away, in my opinion, from open source. Companies were taking and taking and taking and taking, and they weren't doing anything when it came to giving back. So I don't look at companies that do what Prusa did or what E3D did and say, you're doing it wrong. Their hand was forced by everybody else just cloning them. Now companies still do clone them, but now Prusa and others have recourse to go after these companies and say, no, 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 you can't do that. Support the damn makers. Come on. They're yeah. literally the backbone of this industry. They need more support. They do. Hell, half the technology improvements that have been coming out to the printers is because of the makers. Yes. Agreed. Like you wanted PEI beds. That wasn't companies. That was makers gluing PEI sheets yep. onto steel. And that became the first PEI bed. And now every printer. You wanted Core XY to be as popular as it is. Well, guess what? That was hobbyists again. You wanted heated chambers. Yep, that's hobbyists again. Oh, well, didums. Okay, maybe Stratasys owns 15 million patents on the concept of heat, but that's a separate matter. They weren't ever going to share that. No. But all of it, even like pressure advance, hell yeah. Pressure advance is such a huge bit, especially as we're getting longer and longer nozzles to go faster and faster. If we didn't have pressure advance, we'd be stuck at V6 nozzle. Pressure advance makes volcano nozzles possible. It makes 30 millimeter nozzle. It makes Pika possible. If you didn't have pressure advance, you wouldn't get that. Yep. Clipper, which is the backbone of every 3D printer yeah. at this stage. Like, if it wasn't for Clipper, RepRap firmware wouldn't have been under threat and been updated. No. If it wasn't for Clipper, none of these cheaper machines would be even possible to function because Clipper's input shaper is the sole driving force of high-speed 3D printers. Yep. Ignoring RepRap firmware because they're their own little walled ecosystem of debug. But every machine you buy, you can thank Vaughan. You can thank Clipper. You can thank the makers. And then these companies just take from the giants, which are the little people, and make themselves bigger. And it, it just sucks. It just hurts.